are now four rounds between Jose Luis Herrera and this man, the 11 0 Janir Gortico. So there is Herrera. Herrera is 16 and 10. He's from Colombia. He has struggled in KO seven times. Most recently, he was taken out in the fourth round by Eric Fields on December 14th. And there is Dortigos, the two-time World Amateur Champion from Cuba. He was on his way to be favored in the 2008 Olympics to win gold, but he had a broken hand, defected in 09. And he is now 11-0 with 11 knockouts in his pro career based out of Miami. Yeah. He's 11 and all, don't you? Because if you said we're 11 knockouts, and I have no doubt, shortly he'll be 12 and all with 12 KOs after tonight. Tony so makes the referee. Quite honestly, Tony, he better be, at least in my estimation, if he wants to continue being looked at as a serious prospect. He's fighting Herrera, who's coming in on five days' notice, and Herrera, who has lost his last six fights and KO in three of them. How about this scalloped haircut on Dortigos? Trying to be fashionable here on the Vegas Strip under the lights of prime time TV. As long as you can fight, I can tolerate anything. And somebody will say it's good as long as he keeps winning. Because he wants to get a little attention. The best way to do that is move your hands at the right time. I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised, and I said earlier that the collision here is allowing a fighter who has lost six in a row to fight an 11 0 fighter who was a great amateur. Cortigos, two time world amateur champion with 257 amateur bouts. So many times that these junior fighters, the records really don't matter. See a guy at 7 0, 8 0, 9 0, he may as well be 25. I mentioned before, Herrera took the fight on five days' notice, so he, right away you wonder what about his condition? Well, he came in the heaviest of his career. Started his career at 168, he went at 202. Little sore flesh around the belly area of Herrera, and after that time to do any sit ups. If I'm Gorticos in his corner, I'm saying, place a left hook downstairs. Landed a good right hand to the body in the opening minute of this fight. In there it is again, coming with the right hand under that left elbow of Herrera. <laughs> the punches that go around, the looping shots, like that. Around the ear, around the gloves, those look for those punches. Not because it's bad technique, but because Dotico has enough experience to adapt and adjust to that kind of punch with a guy who puts his gloves up when that's the opening. Around the ear, around the glove. Kind of like a quarterback, you know, he steps back in the pocket, the hands are up. And he can't throw the ball straight, so he changes his angle of his arm to throw from the side a little bit to get it through those arms, to get it over those lines. Well, you want to look the punch against a guy like Herrera who puts those earbuds on. That's exactly what the Tingles is trying to do. And there's round one here at the Cosmopolitan, that outdoor setting there with the big marquee. Well, on April 29th, John plans to have Friday Night Fights outdoors overlooking that strip in what is their giant, spectacular pool area. And he said, hey, I want consistent fights that fans can come to, not feel like they're overpriced and beyond them. A good steady stream for the local fight game here in Vegas. Well, I think what's important is that, what I think what's important is that, not just the mega fights. You know, a lot of the mega fights are here in, Las Vegas, the gambling capital, but 
stop, 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 stop. What you say? Consistent fights. You want to have regular fights with the regular people on a regular level. And I think that the CEO is hooked up with a good promoter to do that. Louis de Cubans is a good guy to do that. And he has a lot of these Cuban fighters and he knows how to put on pretty good fights. Seeing a slew of Cuban fighters through the years. Our opening bout showcasing Bill Johnson coming up a TKO winner. Arislandi Walla, who's the real talk about at 154 pounds, coming up in the main event against Carlos Molina. And right now, a good look at you near the Turkish sleeve. Cruiserweight 11 0 with 11 knockouts against the seemingly overlaps for Jay Luis Herrera. He's trying to hang in there. Tico's. Where given the time by the referee Tony Reese. Tico's gets the warning from Reese to keep the punches up. Okay, here we go, time in. He's on the right hand that's straight below that white belt line. And again, make it no excuse, but when you see a low blow, 90% of the time, it comes from an uppercut, and that's the punch that's hard to control. You know, you know, to get to weight can't lose it. You're swinging it in an arc, you're bringing it up, and it's just, it's harder to get that punch to the place you want to, they stay in once in a while. A little less control in the navigation of that punch. I really think Dortigas has to get a knockout here. I mean, everybody's saying what a hot prospect he is. Again, he's in there with a guy who's rolled six in a row and knocked out. It's really up. And, and I think he's, oh, good he's, right on, here. he's on his way to get him. So that's the experience of Dortigas. He actually wants to knock out. He doesn't want a decision. So what he did was he waited for Herrera to engage him. And when he did, he punched with him. And now he has the knockout. Cortico's talking smack after the stoppage there. Landed a combination. Herrera was unsteady. And Tony Reeves ended it. Everything was against Herrera going into this fight. He was also the smaller man. You know, he turned pro 168, only moved up to cruiserweight in his last 10 fights, while Dotico has fought most of his fights between 196 and 201. And you're going to see that size difference there with that right hand. He engaged Herrera, caught him as he was punching. Again, that right hand was straight. The punches from Herrera gave a window of opportunity because they were wide. Here's the end of the fight. We talked about it, Joe, the punch is behind the ear. Dortigo's had enough experience to recognize that was the opening. Go around those gloves, don't go up the middle, loop it a little bit, and then, of course, the uppercut at the end. Got him the victory. Let's well, send it up to the ring to Thomas Trier. Ladies and gentlemen, the first house of Republican of Las Vegas. Here is the official time. Two minutes, 36 seconds of round number two. Our referee charge, Tony Weeks, starts the contest. And here by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, you hear El Cubano Cortico. Cortico's now 12-0 knockouts. TKO is going around for the unbeaten Cubans tonight. Joel Johnson, a seventh round TKO. Dortico's now a second round TKO. We will see if Arislandi Lara will fall in line as he faces the veteran Carlos Molina.